Okay, folks, I think it's about time. I'm going to do a very long-term review on the Old Country Barbecue Pits Smokehouse Smoker. I've had this smoker for about three years. Um, I've used it, I don't know, probably a hundred times. And there are a few things that I like about it and a few things that I don't like about it. But overall, I really like this smoker. And for the money, I think it's a good value. This smoker obviously is not an offset smoker. So it does have certain limitations when it comes to that. However, I think for what it is, it's very good and especially at the price. I am gonna say some negative things about it in this review, but I don't want you to think that I'm giving it a negative review because I am not. This is a great smoker. I enjoy having it and I look forward to doing a lot more cooking in it. The first thing I noticed when I got this smoker was that it's, it's kind of janky looking, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but the, uh, the fire box and, and smoke box are square to each other, but they're not square to the, uh, the rack below, and the legs are all kind of off kilter. It's, there's kind of an optical illusion because the back legs uh, slant backwards and the front legs front, slant frontwards. But the front legs also slant to this side here. They start closer at the top and farther that way at the bottom, both of them. And they, it's not like they split outwards like this. They both go on a diagonal. And uh, again, I don't know if you're going to be able to pick that up from the video. But that was one thing. Also, uh, in order to make it run right, I had to take the plate that is normally in the firebox and replace it with a bottom cooking shelf which gave me much better uh, airflow and made it so that I could run a better fire however because there's uh, no containment it's a very big area unlike in a, a many of the offset smokers which have a cylindrical shaped firebox and the coals tend to gather in the center which makes it much easier to start a fire if the coals are concentrated it's much easier to get new logs lit so I invested in the uh, Lone Star Grills fire management basket, which you see working right now, which is a fantastic thing. It was $100 delivered at the time. I had that for about a year and a half, maybe two years, maybe even longer than that. I don't know, but quite a while. And I found that it works. It lives up to the expectations. It was worth every penny. It's a bargain at twice the price. But that's neither here nor there because we're not talking about that. So you'll see that I moved a cooking shelf to the firebox and I'm going to have to uh, do a stop cut here. I need both my hands and then we'll start back up again. Okay, folks. So what you see here, in addition to a beautiful chuck and a uh, 10 pound pork butt is this is what normally comes in is the fire grate. This is what you're supposed to build your fire on. But as you can see, it warps and it has not big ventilation holes and it's kind of janky but it makes a good tuning plate so that's what i put it in there for so i'm down to two cooking shelves which has not hampered me at all i would easily say there's as much space on there as there is on most affordable um, offset smokers i can do four briskets very easily of any size um, four to six large pork butts a variety of foods so I've never really had space issues but my main beef about this is this water pan it it folds up on itself because the metal is is uh, really light gauge the welds were kind of junky and the angles were all akimbo and it's just it's just really difficult to fill once it's in the smoker there's no relief here so to get a, a hose or a watering can or something in there to add water to it is very difficult. And I wish there was a better way of doing that. Um, also, I wish that the water drain, um, well, the water drain is kind of inconsequential. I don't ever use it. So um, I'm gonna close the smoker back up now because I don't wanna lose my heat. 
and I'll continue to discuss it. So that water pan, not a fan. The other thing I've, uh, I've kind of wanted to do and I have not yet, in order to run these probe uh, cables, I'm gonna have to drill holes and get some of those silicone uh, cable guides and um, I think that'll, that'll help a great deal in preserving my uh, cables. So here's the water drain I was talking about. Um, a lot of people were like, oh, get a ball valve. Ball valves are $40. This 100% opening gate valve was $13. So that's what I got. And it really doesn't serve much purpose. So it's kind of a waste. Um, the casters, not great. Not great. And because they go in two different lines, getting them up ramps on a trailer is not the easiest thing. And also the tra the smoker is top heavy. Last time I moved it, I was able to lay it on the side and I laid it on this side, which doesn't really have much on it. It doesn't have the, the shelf on it. It doesn't have the, the uh, drain and it doesn't have the doors. And so I was able to lay it on this side because I had a very strong person to help me get it back upright and get it off the trailer. It was much more stable. The first time I moved it, I didn't have that and I had to do it vertically. And it was very tippy on a small landscaping trailer and I was limited to a very slow speed in order so that the whole thing wouldn't tip over while we were driving. So moving it, not a great thing. But again, overall, what I found is it's not hard to get nice clean smoke and it's not hard to maintain t maintain temperatures particularly after putting that cooking grate and especially after putting that lone star grills fire management basket in it in the firebox um i did at one point drill underneath that can is a little like a, a tube and that tube had a fan for a uh, barbecue controller which I'm not going to mention by name because it was a piece of junk it was a very expensive piece of junk I didn't like it and I've replaced it since then with this uh, Thermoworks Smoke X4 which I love it's fantastic and um, I do that so that air isn't rushing in that tube and eventually I'm going to take that tube out and just weld a piece over it uh, my new host has welding equipment we're just going to weld a plate, plate over the hole and then I have the vents here. Now the vents here give plenty of uh, range of operation. It's easy to maintain uh, a nice clean fire um, and also to control your temperatures. As you can see right now, I'm running at 242 and I have nice clean smoke. So all in all, I would recommend this. I, um, at the time I bought it, they were, I forget, $6.99 or $7.99 on Academy. The shipping was i think i paid for upgraded shipping and at the time was like 130 dollars. i don't believe that's the case anymore and i also know that they're, they're it's very uncommon to see them in stock um but if you can find one uh i highly recommend it for the money because for the whole thing to be delivered you know slightly under a thousand dollars basically with uh the price of the smoker the tax the shipping and the tip to the driver who brought it in um it was just about a thousand bucks delivered as is and on top of that you know um i went and bought the uh fire management basket which was a hundred dollars delivered and um as you can see i've never gone to using the dial thermometers i'd like to at some point but good ones are pricey and um I don't know, I've just always used an electronic probe. And once I get my silicone ports in there, um, the electronic probe should be even even better and less of a, you know, less annoying uh, opening and closing the door. So those are my issues, those won't be your issues, but I just wanted to show you because if that's how you're working things right now, just plan on getting some of those, uh, those little um, probe ports and um, figuring it out. But I highly recommend this piece. Um, I was very frustrated it, with it when I first got it. I struggled, but right now I'll throw in a couple of very small sticks, hit it with the, uh, the propane weed burner torch, get a good fire going and get progressively larger and larger sticks on there until I get a coal bed. And usually by that point, 
the heat soaked into it and I'm at cooking temperature and it's ready to put on meat. That process generally takes about an hour. On a good day, 45 minutes. On a bad day, an hour and 15. A very, very cold day or a wet day. Um, also, you notice it did come painted and I've been um, kind of remiss lately in putting uh, the coating of oil on it. I'm out of spray oil right now, but normally what I would do is I would spray the outside while I'm using it so that that oil cakes on. It's ugly, but it does preserve it, doesn't allow it to rust. And I noticed when we were shipping it the other day that the bottom underneath um, was rusty. So I'm going to have to spray some up underneath the bottom to get that. And uh, the, the also the baffle between the firebox and the cookbox is another rust point, And you're going to have to focus on make sure, making sure that you keep oil on that because the fire burns so hot, it burns off anything and it doesn't remain. So when you extinguish your fire, let it cool down, spray it real good with oil just so that it has that coating and it won't rust between then and the next time you cook. But that's my long-term review, my very long-term review. If you can find one, buy one. I don't think you'll feel bad. I, I, they have plenty of capacity. It's easy to have a good fire, particularly with the small mods I've done. And I feel like it's uh, definitely worth the while for the money. Although I can tell you that my next smoker is going to be an offset. It's going to be a big one and it's going to be expensive. So hopefully that'll be in the next year or so. And uh, in the meantime, enjoy. So there are a few other things I wanted to mention about this. Um, one is the welds. Now the welds look, they're booger welds. So they're not pretty. And... Uh, for instance, when I got that Lone Star Grills fire management basket, it, you couldn't even tell it was welded. It was so smooth. It was just like it was formed out of one piece of metal. So the other thing of these hinges, um, they're not great. They're just kind of very basic. The welds on these are not too bad and the doors don't hang or hang funny. Um, and what I do is when I'm spraying the oil on it like this to, uh, season the outside i usually spray a lot down in there just use it as a lubricant to keep them going the door for the um the damper is just a slide and you kind of have to hit it with some amount of force um, to make it work um, it's basic simple construction but it works and when it shuts off it shuts off good and it's got enough ventilation to actually keep your fire going from a very cool fire to a very hot fire. Um, you can see here some of the, the welds. Not great, not bad. Here's one that they ground off. But it's kind of gross. And like along this edge, you can tell that there's an awful lot of grinder marks and slob and splatter. And, just not real fantastic but again consider the price and that this is light gauge metal um, I think it is much harder to uh, to weld the lighter gauge stuff and um, again the casters if you look this way in the back here you can see the casters that are out by the door that stick out and then Underneath, you can see the teeny little metal swivel casters, and this is the back, so there's the push handle and the drain. And you can see that the casters are not in line, so they're, they cover about a six inch span, so if you're going up a ramp and your ramp is 10 or 11 inches wide, you really have to make sure you're steering it well, or you may go off. And the flip-up table, it just has these two prop bars that are both independent. So you have to lift it up and make sure they catch in the underneath side, underneath side lip here. And then let the shelf down and it holds them. And it's pretty level and it, it seems to do well. But it's very close here. And I've actually set wood on fire by keeping it too close. I melted a hole in my, my gloves, the high temp waterproof gloves and I end up having to buy these crappy things to replace them um, and I wonder about how it's affecting my 
$400 thermometer. Um, what else is there? You can see some of the welds here, not too bad. I mean, everything is fairly heavy duty. Oh, the other thing was the shelves have these little tabs welded on, some of them. <laughs> so the channel that they run in is like a Z channel. And so all three of these shelves can slide out, which is good for cleaning. But they have these little tabs and some of them were welded in such a way like one, one was laying in there here and just not welded it. I don't know what became of it, but it's gone. This one is so tight that no matter what shelf you put in there, it's very hard to get it past that. And then when it, you know, this thing, you can see this corner is up in the air because it's, it's all bent because of the heat. Uh, so I don't know. And then they used angle iron for the feet on the water pan and they're different lengths and they're in different spots and they're kind of crooked. And right now the thing's full of water, but the worst welds were in this water pan. So I had actually called the manufacturer and had a discussion with them. And I said two things about this that would make it a lot better. One is if you just made it out of the next size up of metal. So I think this is 11 gauge. And if it was like quarter inch or whatever is like just down from a quarter, it would have more mass and I think it would work better. It'd be a lot heavier and tougher to deal with, so the caster situation would have to get squared away. But also just put C-channel in where the shelves are, and that way you could pull them out part way and they wouldn't flop over. See, the way that they're set right now, there's nothing holding them in the back, so if you were to pull something out with weight on it, the whole shelf would just tip and your meat would fall on the ground. So, I think those are the last things. Also that you can see there's hanging rods. These bottom ones, I don't know what you would hang from them down there, but every row, like you can see them on the back there and in the back there. I mean, if you were gonna hang ribs, probably you could take all the shelves out and maybe hang them from just the top or short sausages. You might be able to use the, the first two and maybe the third one if this, uh, this paint, this, great wasn't it if all the greats were gone you might be able to use it um so i don't know I, i'm not really sure why they have three rows of those it seems kind of i don't know it seems like if they had put some up here and had four that you could alternate and kind of put them in a star pattern or an x pattern you get more capacity up high where you need it and then just discontinue the bottom ones i don't know i'm not really sure what the methodology was behind that but last but not least, the chimneys. There's two of them, not really sure why. <laughs> Neither one of them is particularly tall, although the draw doesn't seem to be an issue. And I don't think you really want this to be much taller than it is. My last host used to keep this in his garage and I know that it cleared by like a, a, a credit card thickness underneath his uh, garage door opener. So, and the lip of the garage door when it was all the way up. So getting it in the garage was actually, no, not the lip of the door. I think it was the garage door opener, but it was very, very low uh, garage door. And that height was um, already kind of high and any taller that would have had to live outdoors. And um, that brings one other thing, which is the cover or lack thereof. There's no cover designed for this. I did, however, find a cover that was for I don't know, some generic cover for some sort of outdoor piece of equipment that I bought at a, a Home Depot or a Lowe's for $25, which actually seemed to work fairly well. It had a draw cord and it would come down to, you know, about here and I would pull the draw cord tight and it had air in between so it never rusted, it never got moldy. And I used to tighten the cord and then I would wrap the cord around the drain after it cooled down. Of course, you couldn't put a cover on hot, so you wait till it cools down, then you cover it. But I haven't, I kind of misplaced it when it was being garage stored. And hopefully I'll be able to locate it again or else a replacement for it. Um, it was fairly cheap and I used it for a couple of years, so it doesn't owe me anything. But I'm gonna wanna get one since it's here. But at the very least, you wanna close these caps. So it's nice that they added these caps and they move pretty easily. You know, and they do a good job of covering up so that if it rains, unless it's torrential or high winds, you don't really get water inside the cook chamber. Um, but 
since the top is is wavy all the all the metal on here is wavy from all the heat cycles and um, since that's the case water does pool on the top so you got to be mindful of not letting it pool there so you don't get rust so those are my final thoughts I hope if you get the opportunity or in the market for a cabinet smoker um, something like this especially with a the shelf folded down there is no uh, offset that is going to offer you this small of a footprint even with the shelf up nothing nothing worthwhile will give you this footprint if your patio has very little room um, obviously space is not an issue for me here but I just kind of wanted to try this type of smoker after having a cheap offset and um, this was a definite step in the right direction and I'm happy that I bought it um, so this is something to consider um, but if like if you have an enclosed motorcycle trailer you might want to check to see I think it's 72 inches high to the highest point from the ground to the highest point so if your opening is not at least 72 inches you won't be able to put this in your enclosed trailer so keep all those things in mind but if you do find that something like this would suit your needs and you want to give it a try, I highly recommend it. Take that with, you know, for whatever, but I've had it for several years now. It hasn't rusted out um, and it's, it's done a, a good job. It's been moved three times now from its original location. It was moved to the original location and three times after that. And who knows, it may get moved again. Or if, if I'm lucky and it's still in good shape, Whenever I get my offset, I may be able to sell this and recoup a little bit of the money back from it. So anyway, I'll make a video out of that if I put this up for sale. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Have a great Labor Day. Well, actually, this video is probably not going to get posted for another week. I'm doing two videos at once. I'm doing this review and I'm doing a cooking video. So the cooking video will come out on Labor Day. This will hopefully come out the following week. And that way I can post some regular content for you guys and get back in the swing of things. But be good to each other, have a good time, be safe, be well, God bless. Smokers chugging, baby. <laughs>